Hey guys, this is Daniel and welcome back to another video which you could consider a tutorial. So today's topic will be hair modeling and it is focused on stylized characters as the screenshot that you can see here and I'll give you a quick close up so that you can see what kind of um, difficulties this task could have. So it's lots of detail as you can see and really when you start out a pro with a project like this it can be very hard to know where to start and how to approach this task at all. So first of all I need to tell you that there is really no shortcut. In this video you will learn about the techniques that I used, kind of the rules that I um, followed in order to achieve this consistent result and, and also give you a demonstration of how this workflow could look like but really there is no shortcut in the end with this technique you need to to model one strand after another and the more patience you have uh, usually the better the result will be so that's the one thing but let's move on I have actually a recording of the entire modeling process and because I know that this is interesting to some of you and especially as I will probably forget to mention a few special cases as well as um, I'm worried that my demonstration will not be representative for all the situations that you can encounter. Uh, I will upload this as well as a time-lapse version so you should still be able to uh, see most of the things that are going on so feel free to look at that even though it will be a very very long video because I think it took me a bit more than four hours to create the hair um, but if you can learn from it that's good so what I'm doing is basically I start to line out the strands um, on both sides um, I like I have groups first of all um, I'll show you here maybe this here is one group of strands four, four sub strands in one strand and I do it in blocks like that because it kind of creates a more interesting look if you have stronger separations in some points and within this object now I I make a polyline along the left and the right side of each strand because there are layers at many points and and I want first to capture the information of how I want them to be layered and which direction I want them to flow in and that's why I use this approach. I also want to emphasize that it's very important to make the curves run together at one point or at least at the point they belong to. Um, so make the curves follow the same line for this kind of style. Of course there are, there are hairstyles where it will be a line or especially with those pointy hairstyles, I believe you won't even have so much of a point where everything runs together. But again, if, if this is the hairstyle that you're doing, uh, you should make sure that you know your hair really ends up where you want it to be and the curves need to be smooth into towards that direction. Like if, if it doesn't really work out and you find that you need to make a very sharp curve at some point in order to make it to your destination uh, basically you need to fix the the whole other area so that everything falls into place well also the thickness you see that the reason why the thickness of the hair looks so evenly distributed and and natural is because the curves are just like they have a starting point and an ending point and from here to there they have one curve curvature and thickness that adds to it and uh, goes away again. So there's nothing more to it, nothing complex. Um, of course, you know, if there is a hair strand that's longer and that falls on your shoulder and has collides with something, it will be a bit more complex. But for most of the cases, you really want to keep the curve simple because the hair tries to follow in, uh, fall in such a way. So I have one more il illustration to look at. I drew just this one strand here and uh, this is basically what you would see if you cut through them all. So you have one big strand and later on 
you get kind of this layered effect where they still share some of the volume but uh, really they already start to um, get this layered um, in this layered stage. Later on this trend will split up and you will see the same thing happening on this side and then uh, as for strand 2 and 3 they just split up, they don't have layering. So as you can see we pretty much have two very common cases where strands either just split up without any layering or where one strand um, go goes above or below in a different way. And finally I want you to know that I start modeling these strands as planes which is why you can use this technique for plane, planar ha hair as well but I also want to cover how I'm turning this into volumes. Basically if you were to do planes you would want that every strand really ends like it's continued to this to the tip but with with volume you'll have to consider that you know if there's something below and it's merged it will disappear and basically you know the strands have to merge in volume which is kind of difficult but I want to move over to the demonstration now before that here's a quick look at the 3d model itself um, here's the 3d model and here you can see again how things work out here. So we have these strands as separate groups. So here in this object I have three big main strands and all of them contain a few substrands. So these two are quite simple. It's really just you know, a big strand that splits up here although I have the layering effect in here, like if you take a, a section of, of this part, you can see that I have this step in here. For this one, is it, this is the one uh, that we looked in detail before with the two strands above and here are the ones that are just splitting up. And this one had a special case which I spent lots of time working on because I was not happy for a long time but really there will be cases where you have to um, play around and come up with a new technique. But this is rather rare so um, I won't generalize the rules for that. For the back hair things were also simpler. In this case I made sure that things run together in a line and not in a point so that you get the hairstyle that was intended but other than that the whole thing is very similar I start out with everything flat and then I introduce steps to it and at some point they split up and they create this kind of hairstyle so now I'll move on with a demonstration so imagine you had a head and you were going to to model the strands now so I'm just going to create now here a random polyline and I like to copy it and return it by pressing R twice and moving the mouse bit to the side because then you get usually a good result but you'll have to adjust it anyways it just gives you a good starting point so let's say this is my first outline strand and there is now a second one that is above so I'm just saying it will be something like this and now if it was just planar a plane we could just uh, fill it like this by the way the shortcut for filling is F so I select two vertices or just this end and press F and then I can continue pressing F because it will just fill up the faces. I recalculate the normals by selecting everything and this is how you know that your normals are wrong if it's kind of darkish and stuff. And you select everything and you press Ctrl and just make sure that you're in edit mode or otherwise you will start a new file. And so this is how basically what it would look like if you just did planes but we want to have volume so you'll have to consider a way to merge them together which is a bit more difficult so <clears throat> um, 
how should we approach it then? So first of all, I want to merge what I know will be together for sure. For example, here I know that this will the same point. So I merge them together by pressing W, merge, and then at last if the target was selected afterwards. Then I also know that, see how only in this part uh, the vertices overlap. So only here I will be able to make the connection downwards. For all the other points before, you have to select them, press G twice and move them so that they are below, uh, below like this point that we're targeting for our step. And then finally, just fill up this last point, or maybe you don't even want to have a step here anymore. Let's just merge them because at center, because this is where our strand will be joined together already. So this geometry is now quite simple. I select now everything and I copy it with Shift D and the approach that I use to add volume to it is now using shrink and fatten. I start out with just a very thin thickness and then I deselect um, starting and ending points and then I do the same thing again because this way I'm giving it a more of a dynamic thickness which is an, an effect that looks good usually. So. Um, and now we can just start filling this up. Uh, we start with whatever we are sure of. So for example here we know that this is definitely going to be an edge and I'm pretty sure up to here we can keep it. I'm doing the same thing for the other side. I'm just selecting this edge and, and keep pressing F because that fills everything up. And now over here things get a bit more difficult. In fact I want them to share some of their thickness. Let's say we had a situation where it was like this. So what do we do? Basically this part this would need to be part of this edge and this here would be part need to be part of this edge. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. In fact just to make it a bit clearer for you, uh, we know already that this will be a triangle and this down here will be a triangle. Right? Because we need to step in here. But how do we like manage this situation here because I'm not going to fill it up here because that destroys the flow. We want this to be continuous. So what I do is um, this face will need to be uh, changed a little bit. Basically uh, you need to create a cut here like you need a subdivision. You can do that by selecting um, this edge and by pressing subdivide somewhere here, subdivide. And then you have this random point in here, but be careful because now you have a face with five, five points and that's something you want to avoid. So we're going to fix that right away. What I want to do is I want to cut from the lower point on the next loop to this point. And this has a triangle in it, but it's all right. It's something that you won't see in the result. Uh, I always try to make these um, triangles face inwards basically. So like the, the edge that shows outwards should always be clean. And sometimes you won't have access to the area to use the cut tool, which is here by the way. Uh, no, it's knife, the knife tool. Uh, so the other thing that you can do is you can go to uh, select a face, delete only the face, and then you can manually fill the faces again with F. And now with that done, you can actually merge these two and it will be done. But you see, we have still this, the same situation on the other side. So this time I really don't have good access to it. So I'm deleting only the faces or in this, yeah, let's delete only the faces. I subdivide this edge, you really need to have it under control though because it, it's very easy to mistake points. You, you really need to know which point is which. And then you merge together the two that are left and basically this is how you do it. Make sure that the normals are facing the right direction with control N and there you have it, a volume, a volumetric 
strand of hair that you can use and that has quite a good topology even for subdivisions. It should give you good results. So that's the approach that you use basically. You just have to keep going, have patience, do one strand after another and eventually you should be able to uh, reach a result like this here. Again, if you're interested in watching the whole process, I will upload a better version of how I created this hair in particular, which took me four hours, maybe sped up times four, it will be maybe one hour. Mm. I, don't, I don't know yet, I still have to create that video, but um, maybe you can learn something from it. One more thing that I would like to let you know uh, about is that once I'm done with this character, which I'm currently really focusing on, like I started modeling this character a month ago and I repeated replacing parts and remaking parts over and over because I really want this character to be one of the best characters that I make, uh, that I made so far. So I think once it's done in a, f in a few months, <laughs> maybe, it will be pretty awesome. But I'll be sharing the 3D files on Patreon for everyone who is supporting me. And that is, of course, uh, on top of the 10 other characters, the finished ones that you will get there for any kind of support at all. Uh, as soon as you sign up to the page, as, as soon as you get the subscription. So to some of you, to those who are learning stylized character modeling, this might be very interesting. So if you're interested, feel free to take a look. Anyways, I'm glad you watched the video. <laughs> I hope I could help you with something. Um, let me know in the comments if it worked for you or if you have any suggestions. And other things that you want to say. I will do my best to publish more videos again and I'll see you in the next one.